Hey, good morning. Good morning. Come on in. You can stand with me. Let's prepare our hearts for worship. This is Psalm chapter 54, starting in verse 4. The Lord God has become my divine helper. He leans into my heart and lays his hands upon me. God will see to it to the, that those who sow evil will reap evil. So, Lord, in your great faithfulness, destroy them once and for all. Lord, I will offer myself freely, and everything I am, I give to you. Can we say that together? Lord, I will offer myself freely. Lord, I'll offer myself freely. And everything I am, I give to you. Everything I am, I give to you. I will worship and praise your name, O Lord. I will worship and praise your name, O Lord. For it is precious to me. For it is precious to me. It's good. And the rest of the psalm says, Through you I'm saved, rescued from every trouble. I've seen with my eyes the defeat of my enemies. I've triumphed over them all. Lord, we thank you that in you there is triumph this morning, that you always lead us in triumph, that you have the victory. We thank you for who you are. Lord, we offer ourselves up to you this morning. Would you take every piece of us, all-consuming fire, would you consume every part of us? Would you just begin to lift him up this morning, even with your own voice? Let's just begin to offer our thanksgiving, offer our praise to him. Yes, thank you, Lord. You are high and lifted up. You're seated on a throne, high above us all. We offer our praise to you today. Yes, God. Holy Spirit, you're welcome here. You're welcome, Lord Jesus. You're welcome. Have your way this morning. Have our hearts today. Have our hearts today. Have our hearts today. Our hearts today. Amen, amen, amen. Let's pray.
our vision today, Lord. Yes, God. There's a table that you've prepared for me in the presence of my enemies. It's your body and your blood you shed for me, and this is how I fight my battle. There's a table. Surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. We're getting high. 
no soul that you can save. All things are possible. Sing it out, sing it out. The darkest night, you can light it up. You can light it up, oh God of revival. Let hope arise, death is overcome. You already won, oh God of revival. God of revival. We believe you're here, Lord. We believe you're here. Working in our midst. Oh, we've seen, oh, we've seen what you can do. Oh, God of wonder. Power has no end. The things you've done before in greater measure, declare it, you will do again. We believe. For there's no prison wall you can't break through, no mountain you can't move, all things are possible. And there's no broken body you can't raise, no soul that you can't save, all things are possible. The darkest of night, you can light it up, you can light it up, oh God of revival, let hope arise. on the throne of my life So why should my heart fear what you've defeated I will trust in you Lord There's no prison wall you can break through No mountain you can move All things are possible No broken no broken body you can't raise, no soul that you can't save, all things are possible. The darkest night, you can light it up, you can light it up, oh God of revival, let hope arise. Sing this over our city. Come awaken your people. Come awaken this city. Oh God of revival, pour it out, pour it out. Every stronghold will crumble. And I hear the chains hit the ground. Oh God of revival, pour it out. Come awaken your people, come awaken this city, oh God of revival, pour it out, pour it out, every stronghold will crumble, I hear the chains in the ground, oh God of revival, pour it out, pour it out, With the darkest night.
Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We rest in your presence, Lord. God, you spoke a word of rest to us. You spoke a word for us to abide, to lay things down, to just ease back into your, your grace and your presence. Thank you, Father, for that word that, that lives upon us even now in this moment, Lord. I thank you that there's great healing. <laughs> There's restoration when we lay it down. There's focus. There's clarity. Clarity. Put your salve upon our eyes, Lord. Let's see clear in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that you are here to care for us. You are here to empower us, Lord. And you have empowered us. Lord, nothing's been wasted in this last year. I declare it in Jesus' name. That's right. <laughs> I hear the Spirit of God saying that you've prayed for awakening, but now you're coming into a time of realizing what I've already awakened in you. What I've already awakened in you shall serve you well in the days ahead. For I've awakened you to your own weakness. I've awakened you to the darker side. I've awakened you to my grace and my glory. I've awakened you to my faithfulness. And I say to you, the awakening that I've brought to you is the awakening that you bring to this world. The awakening that I have brought to you is that which shall be awakened upon the, the nations, even the land that you live in. And so I say to you, my children, as you go throughout this year, you will realize actually what I have awakened in you and how I have graced you and imparted to you over these past months. For I am the Redeemer, says the Lord. Ha! Huh. I make all things new. That which has been sent to destroy shall not destroy, says the Lord. For have I not raised a standard against it in the shedding of my blood, in the empowering of my people, in the declaration of my word? And my word shall prevail and not return unto me void, says your God. Walk in the light that I have given to you and know that this is the day of salvation. This day is the day of celebration. This day is the day of renewal, says the Lord. And my spirit rests upon you. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In prayer, just a little bit earlier, we were, a few of us were in there praying, and I saw, in my spirit, I saw the Lord and 
untying the shoelaces. Because there's, there's mindsets that we carry in our walk that He just wants to loose us from. He wants to step out of those mindsets. And then the next moment I saw Him cinching up those shoelaces on those things that He's been speaking to us, tying a double knot, because it's time to run. It's time to run. <laughs> Whew. Amen. Amen, Lord. Thank you, Father, for the work of the Spirit, even now. Even now, Holy Spirit, your word does not return to you void. Let your work be real in me. Let it be real in me, Lord, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Throughout the land, oh God, awakening, realization, clarity, understanding, those, those fears, those lies that have not served us well, Lord, we step out. We step up, we kick it off, we step out in the name of Jesus. We renounce with our own words. Can you just say that? I renounce wrong mindsets. I renounce wrong mindsets in Jesus' name. Lord, in the name of Jesus, would you just establish us together, Lord, with the mind of Christ, unshakable, unshakable in this day, Lord. Ha. Huh. Ha. Huh. You know, there's, uh, there's just some lies that have crept in, even, even recently in some of your minds, little things the enemy's tried to push you off balance with. They're just lies. We give no place to them in Jesus' name. Can you identify some of those things? Unsettling things. We give no place to them in the name of Jesus. We give place to God's eternal purpose. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. You're a God of order, and disorder is disallowed. Disorder must leave in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Physically, mentally, spiritually, disorder, we command you to go in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of victory this morning. In the name of Jesus. Woo. Hallelujah. You know, I just, I just love how God, by His Holy Spirit, gives us words. And they're just prayers. They're just words. They're our, like our words that are formed with our mouth, with our breath. But when they originate from heaven, there's substance, there's weight upon those words. And there's effect that goes forth. Amen. James said, the fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Your words are powerful. Yeah. We're standing that, you guys. Well, wow, praise God. Good stuff. Amen. This is Vision Sunday. You may be seated. We're already seated in heavenly places, right? We've got a good view from this vantage point. Seated in heavenly places with Christ. No better place to be. Hallelujah. I love getting on those high points you can see forever, right? Amen. That's where he's put you. That's where he has us today. Amen. So things don't make sense, go a little higher. Yeah, take some time, rise up. Praise God. I'm going to ask the ushers to wait upon us for our morning tithes and offerings. Thank you for your faithfulness and giving. Amen. During Vision Sunday, today we are going to go through like where we've been, what God's done this past year, some of the things he's speaking to us and uh, some of the accomplishments that we've had and as well, uh, just point the, point the to, towards the target for this year and what he's saying to us. So just thank you for your faithfulness, you guys, and in uh, on this day, so thus far as the Lord helped us. Amen? He's faithful always. Amen. Larry, would you bless the offering for us, please? Thank you. Lord, thank you for the daily blessings and the constant blessings you give us. Help us to bless you back. Father, thank you that we can give back to you in this way.
darkest night you can light it up you can light it up oh god of revival let hope arise death is overcome you've already won oh god of revival the darkest the darkest night you can light it up, you can light it up, oh God of revival, let hope arise, death is overcome, you already were, oh God of revival, come awaken your people. Chains hit the ground. Oh God of revival, pour it out, pour it out. Oh God of revival, pour it out, pour it out. The God of revival. season we're entering, for the new set of shoes to walk us into this season. We bless you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning and welcome to the Life Church, a caring and Christ-centered church. If this is your first time joining us, please fill out a visitor's card located in the seat pocket right in front of you. Are you in need of prayer, or would you like to pray on someone's behalf? If so, join us for our intercessory prayer every Thursday at 10 a.m. at the TLC offices. Also, be sure to come join us for Pie Hot every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Saturday at 6 p.m. here at the church. And men of TLC, be sure to join us Friday, February 5th here at the church at 6 p.m. for our men's night. Come out for your chance to win the most coveted trophy of all time and a $15 gift card to Sportsman's Warehouse. It's all happening Friday, February 5th at 6 p.m. here at TLC. And oh yeah, dinner will be provided, fellas. Ladies of TLC, be sure to join us for our women's Bible study starting Friday, March 5th at 10 a.m. here at the church. If you have any questions or would like some more information, please see Angela Crank or Juanita Stone. It's the most timeless underdog story in all of history. David versus Goliath. A shepherd boy that no one believed in, looking up at a nine-foot giant that everyone believed was undefeatable. It's a story we apply to business, to sports, to politics, to a wide assortment of challenges and struggles that each of us face in our lives. And in every version of this story, we want to see ourselves as David. It's easy to think, if I could just be like David, I could fight the giants in my life. The giant of fear, the giant of rejection, the giants of anger and addiction. We all have a giant, that's the bad news. But here's the good news. We are not David. The story of David is not a story about us. It's ultimately a story about Jesus, the one who has slayed not just one giant, but every giant. For all time, for all people, Jesus is the ultimate giant slayer. This is the message at the center of Goliath must fall. There's a remarkable amount of freedom in realizing that Jesus has knocked down your giant for your good 
and for His glory. And when we begin to live in that freedom, not only will we see that Goliath could fall, we see something even more extraordinary. Goliath must fall. And finally, be sure to join us on Wednesday, February 3rd at 6 p.m. here at the church as we begin our brand new six-week study called Goliath Must Fall. If you're interested in joining this Bible study, please sign up on the Church Center app. Kids, you are now free to go to Sunday school. Now please join me in welcoming Pastor Rich Conley as he comes to bring the word. All right, I think kiddos already got the memo that we're, we're going to keep everybody in here today. You know, given that it's Vision Sunday, we want everybody to be uh, uh, aware of where we are and, and where we're going and just give this opportunity. Uh, try not to bore you to death with minor details and all the minutia that goes on in ministry. But, you know, this is something we do every year. And building up to the new year, catching the heart of God, looking at our accomplishments, and looking at the road ahead, unifying our efforts for those uh, challenges that are facing us now. I think the Goliath study is going to be a great uh, study for us. You know, looking at the, the size of the giants that face us in this moment, and how Jesus already faced every one of them as walking us forward in, in his victory uh, through Christ. So that's on Wednesdays, and I'm, we're going to talk about uh, those classes a little bit uh, more further. Also on Vision Sunday, normally we have our Partners in Vision banquet, and this is really our time to just to share a meal with each other and celebrate the, the things that God's done and and our fellowship together. Uh, we love our church. We, we love the family of God. And we, we so enjoy spending time together, which is something over this past year that's been just sorely missing. And uh, looking forward in this new year to further opportunities for community. Uh, we felt it wise in this, at this time to not have the, uh, the vision banquet just yet. We have that planned for Sunday, April 11th. That'll be the week after Easter. So on Easter Sunday, we're going to have some more people in, visitors coming in and so forth. We use that opportunity to invite them to come do a meal and get to know one another in that way. So uh, that's a good thing. Praise God. Uh, you know, firstly, I just wanted to just say thank you, everyone, for your, your contribution, your participation, your fellowship, for being a part what you bring, even if it's yourself, is part of what this is all about, what God has called us to. And beyond that, you know, we're always in a, in a place of developing what we bring to the table. So God gives us things to bring to the table, and then he develops those gifts within us, and we're all in a different process of just how we fit into the body of Christ. And, you know, we're... we're uh, so amazed of the, the various grace giftings that God has given to different ones of us uh, in, the, in the house of God, to, to all of us really. He's given us unique giftings that we share with one another. Uh, I'm thankful for our elder team. Uh, we, we have been together for many, many years. And uh, just this last, was it last week, two weeks ago? Last week, I guess. It was last weekend. It's been a wild week, man. <laughs> uh, last weekend we met Friday night and Saturday morning. Uh, we spent about seven hours praying over us and praying, over, praying together and just strategizing together for the things before us. And uh, you just at the end of that, we had a time of prayer as we prayed for one another. And I was just so blessed how... Man, it was like the Holy Spirit just really came on us in a heavy way <laughs> and just uh, in the prayer time, in the care time. And uh, that's something we want to carry forward. That's something I believe is the Lord's releasing in this year is ministry. Ministry one to another. We need the, the release of the Holy Spirit through each other. And sometimes when we just get on with uh, toughing it out by ourselves, it can get pretty lean 
out there, but he's given us the body of Christ. So I want to just say thank you, team. Uh, thank you for everyone who's involved in ministry and being an expression of the heart of Christ for, for to uh, whoever may come our way and to one another on a regular basis. Thank you for everybody who's uh, supported and, and who has a, a growing uh, relationship with the Lord Jesus. Uh, we're growing our, our relationships together, not only with Him, but with one another. And we want to thank you for that as well. All right, so I want to just uh, talk about uh, the year in review, 2020, 2020 in review. Do we have that, uh, that slide? Okay. I, I, okay, that's all right. I'll just, I'll just go through with what I have. All right. Um, all right, so we want to uh, look in the rearview mirror a little bit and uh, see what, what has happened this last year and some of the accomplishments, some of the challenges before us as well. Uh, in uh, review of, of this last year, what a crazy year it was. Uh, the building upgrades that we were able to do, even though Everybody was social distance, and not so much was happening, really. Uh, we were able to put some security lighting around the building. Uh, we did a major upgrade on our sound and, and media uh, equipment, and in, uh, quite an investment there. Um, we have a, a new backdrop for the baptistry, and uh, so the wood, the wood backdrop back there. Uh, we, we bought a new TV stand. We we're doing... Life groups up at the at the offices, so we got a new stand, new TV for for doing all of that, and got that all set up for small groups. Uh, building repairs, we had a you know thank you for everybody who jumped in there and helped out with the various repairs that uh, we were able to do. Our signboards out on Fourth Street were looking pretty tired, so we revamped the signboards. Uh, we fixed doors that wouldn't close right. There was a number of them because we have some settling here with. Uh, the the, uh, uh, the the soil of this ground that we built the church on, it expands and contracts quite a bit. So uh, uh, it, we've had some settling and some, some heaving and different things. It makes the doors kind of sticky. So we've had to go pack over the doors and make sure everything's working right. And uh, let's see, uh, we put a new shed door from a break-in, we had some vandalism out here. They stole one of our one of our lawn mowers, our weed mower, and broke into the shed. We put a new new door in there. Uh, we fixed uh, from some more vandalism out at the offices. Somebody tried to kick in the door, so we fixed up that door and got that fixed up. Uh, we did some roof repairs over here. I think it's holding water. I was walk, looking at it yesterday, with as the snow was melting and uh, the day before yesterday and. And uh, it looks like it's holding water, so that's a good thing for us. Um, uh, we did, uh, we put some new bigger motors on the evaporative coolers, the evaporative coolers uh, that we use in the summertime. So we geared them up for better efficiency. And trim trees, weed mitigation, fixed some hydrant leaks both in the back and over here on the side. <laughs> you know, things just need to be repaired from time, time to time. And, and uh, this ground is hard to dig. It's hard to dig. It's, it's like rock. Either, either it's rock or it's, it's, it's slimy, stick, you know, muddy stuff. So you got to chunk it off. Hopefully it's dry and you chunk it off in big clumps. So uh, that's always a bit of a workout. Uh, our ministry accomplishments... This past year, um, just for those slides, you guys, I did send a, a on the media email. I sent I sent some slides. I don't know if the, you guys got those. Okay. Okay. On the ministry side of things, we baptized seven. 
How about that? That was cool. The whole family, extended family. Praise God, what an exciting day that was. You know, we navigated the, the COVID-19 shutdowns for nine weeks, which was, uh, <laughs> I look at Josh, I'm not looking you, at you for any particular reason. <laughs> Stop looking at me. <laughs> What's that? All I can say is what happened during the shutdown stays during, during the shutdown. Uh, you know, it's just a realization we're not always at our best, you guys. And, uh, you know, we're under those circumstances and preaching to an empty room and, uh, you know, just having the worship team come out at week after week and, and the, the faithfulness, the team, the, the workers in the, in the sound room, uh, making everything happen. Uh, and so, you know, through that time, now we have a a fairly developed uh, ability to, to put the message out there and to be present on not only Facebook, but uh, YouTube. And so we want to continue to further develop that as well. You know, praying, our, our prayer meetings continued through the pandemic. Even though we weren't having services, we were having prayer services and praying for all of us. And uh, God has been faithful to us through all that. Uh, our online presence was, as I said, is, was developed. Uh, we were navigating the challenges in this past year of missing people in key areas. So people were pulling double duty or just things that we weren't able to, to do or we weren't able to, to roll with. Um, we, were, we had to make some of those calls. And, uh, but through it all, you know, just seeing the effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit during different outlooks. Uh, as people, all of us have a different outlook on, on uh, how this whole thing rolled out and what we should and shouldn't do, that there was grace in the house. And uh, we, we praise God for that, uh, maintaining the unity of spirit and our love and respect for one another during that time. Uh, we resumed our life groups. Uh, we resumed meeting here on Pentecost Sunday. It was amazing to me the last day that March 15th was the last Sunday we met together. It was just such a sweet outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Of some of the other churches are already closed down, but we met together and God was just, he was just heaping himself upon us. And then when we resumed on, on May 31st, I think it was, Pentecost Sunday, it was the same thing. It was just so good for us to be back together and, and to be with each other at that time. You know, you don't realize what you have until you don't have it. And uh, I so appreciate the body of Christ and, and our fellowship that way. So we had, uh, we launched, actually launched a new life group uh, in October. Uh, the women's ministry uh, were meeting uh, in the late fall and men's ministry continued to meet throughout the year. Uh, as far as our missions goes this, this week, or I'm sorry, this year, our missions, uh, we had a, a couple of missionaries that we had been supporting, Benj and Gwen Massey, who were in Nepal, and they, you know, people have their own seasons, don't they? So the season was for them to come back off the field and, and to put their, set, their hand to some new things in their lives. So we're not supporting Benj and Gwen that way anymore, or the Anguianos, who are in Mexico, uh, doing some mission work down there. They're back in the States as well. But we shifted some of that support to uh, Zach Acosta and the PIHOP ministry right here in Pueblo, raising up prayer on behalf of our city, our, our nation, the kingdom of God. And uh, they're doing a great job. It's, a, it's, a, it's, an inner, it's, it's throughout the city. It's a citywide effort, not just a TLC effort. And so... Uh, there's, there's folks that come from different ministries that come and gather here for prayer on a regular basis and now in other churches as well as it, the, the ministry is growing. So uh, another one of our missionaries we've been supporting for just so many years, uh, Caring Pregnancy Center, champion, champions of the cause of the unborn, uh, working on behalf 
of those who can't work for themselves or save themselves, you know, those who are uh, fighting the cause there. Uh, supporting that, um, the Winklers Christian School in Montego Bay, Jamaica. Thank you. Uh, the school in Montego Bay, Jamaica. Um, we've been supporting them for years. Actually, Jerry and Renee Winkler came through our school back here in the 1980s and uh, were launched out of here to Christ for the Nations. Then they went to launch a, their own Christian school in, in, uh, or in Jamaica. So they're doing a great job down there. Steve and Kathy Manning and all their travels throughout uh, the, the nations of the world, uh, bless the nations. Dennis Coyle, our, our friend, who's now ministering in Afghanistan. We support him on a regular basis. We actually take, uh, it's right around 5% of our, all of our monies that come into this church, and we give it towards missions as, a, as an offering uh, towards missions that way. Uh, Casa Hogar, our ministry in Mexico, that uh, we've, we've been building relationships with them for probably 30-some years, taking teams down there from year to year and, and so forth. And there was a, a neat article on Kayla, who's pastor's daughter, who's now married and grown up, has her own kids. And uh, they, the, the city newspaper did an article on her and the kids at the Casa Ogar. So there they are. It's pretty cool. They did a big old article on him. It's really well done. And they were so happy. And we were able to send some money there this last Christmas to, to help support them. And, and so the Lord's really linked our hearts. They're great, great people with a heart for the kingdom. I want to give a, as well, just kind of going through some of the, the nuts and bolts of things here. Uh, with, you know, speaking about all these things, there's just a lot of effort and, and prayer that goes into everything that we have done. But I want to give a brief finance update, just uh, some of the finances that uh, are important for us here. Isn't it interesting, in 2020, with all the shutdown and all, everybody missing and, and even people coming back slowly and we're still not fully back, that uh, our income was $6,334 over 2019. How, how does that happen? That's just amazing. It's, it's just the blessing of God. Our mission support last year was, I'm sorry, that's a typo there. It should be 24,752 because this is a missions church. Our impact is not only near but far. And it's not just here but there as well uh, by God's design. Amen. We've, we've been doing our operation upgrade since 20, 2017, I believe. Operation Upgrade, just working on building up the church. We had thought about selling the property, moving, doing something else, you know, seeing that this is a, a time where we could reassess where we're at and where we're going for the next uh, years before us back then. And God spoke to us so clearly to in, invest right back to where we are and to plan ourselves and position ourselves to express his heart to this city. And so that's where we are, we're at but yet to invest ourselves once again into our building, into our ministries, into our relationships that way. So uh, we've gone through a lot of money just doing some of the, the upgrades that we have. Uh, we're, our balance is right at now about $1,600 in uh, Operation Upgrade. Our loan balance, uh, we took out a loan on the the... When we had Life Cafe out there, we took out a loan to build that building. And then at a later date, we had to put a new skin on the, the dome here. That was in 2007. So we, we took out some money to cover the, uh, the dome with a new uh, sheet of the vinyl uh, material that goes on top. And, and then we resurfaced our parking lots back in 2007. So... Uh, that all added up to what we now hold still as part of our, uh, our debt, our loan. And I'm going to talk about that in a little bit as well. Uh, we brought that down by about 7000 Okay, just making regular payments this last year. So just moving on to 
our vision for this year and really feeling that it's time to move forward. I mean, really. We got to keep going forward. It's not time to stall out. It's not time to wait for later. A sunny day. Rain, hail, sleet, or snow. <laughs> you know? Did Jesus wait for a convenient time when he took our sins to the cross? I don't think so. And he's called us to, to serve his purposes in this earth. Whether it's convenient or not, I think so much of our strength comes when we, we step out of our ability into his ability in those times that are difficult for us. And so it's time for us to move, move forward with the things that he's given us to do. It's so difficult in this environment. You know, I've often said, uh, how many of you have, know how to drive a stick shift? Stick shift, yeah, look at there. Uh, when you drive a stick shift, it's okay to use your left foot, right? Up with the clutch. You don't put the, the left foot on the brake and the gas at the same time. Is that you're just going to burn your brakes up and get poor gas mileage. <laughs> But this year, it, it feels like this past year, we've had the foot on the brake and the gas pedal at the same time. You know, we, we want to go, but we can't go. We can, want to go, we can't go. That's, that's what I've felt like. We want to advance, but you can't advance. And, and so it's, the, that's definitely a challenge coming into a new year and uh, looking at vision for a new year. Just what, what things can we advance into and what is, firstly, and foremost, what is God saying to us at this time? And he has spoken to us so clearly. Uh, the challenge is that we're, at this point, we're operating shorthanded. We don't want to put more burden on, on those who are already doing a whole lot. And so we want to be wise in what we're doing and, and how we're doing it. But we also want to be ready for what lies ahead. We want to be on our toes in that way. Uh, I believe fully that we are coming into a time of outpouring. I was thinking the other day, is, is outpouring from above or is it from within? It's both really, right? When God poured, we sang a lot about it today, God's pouring out his spirit. Pour out revival. Well, Jesus said, from your innermost beings will pour out rivers of living water. So it really... You know, it comes up, it comes out from us. And yet it comes out with the grace of heaven that descends upon us. That's a beautiful thing. And I, this, this is what I see. This is what we, we have a sense that we're in that place on the cusp. I mean, the prophetic word today was, he's already been doing it. And we're going to walk into the realization of it. Come on. He's already been doing it. <laughs> well, we didn't even know. But in this year, we're going to realize what he's done in this past year. We're going to realize the strength that he's given us. We're going to realize the, the, the focus that he's given us. We're going to realize the discernment that he's given us as things have been exposed and the enemy's tipped his hand, right? So, so that awakening that happens in us is the awakening that happens in, in the land. Amen. Amen. It's released in prayer, yep. released in, in, in obedience. You know, it's just we show up together Sunday to Sunday. Here we are at the eastern gate of our city, positioned, positioned by God to have influence on the city of Pueblo, uh, to bring a change in the atmosphere. It's not, only, it's not always the, the physical things that need to change. The atmosphere needs to change. The oppression needs to clear the, the blindness needs to come off. And I just really sense that God is pouring out his spirit and, and, and he's pouring out through us. And, and these things, things that we can't do ourselves are things that are going to be start, starting to manifest and, and come about because he's the God of miracles, the God of revival. He's bigger than it all. Amen. Joshua, when he was... <laughs> Good man. Hey, you're ready for that one. He was just waiting. <laughs> you were waiting. When the children of Israel were going into the land of Canaan, Joshua said to the sons of Israel, keep a distance. We're going to send the ark out before. 
He says, you've never been this way before. You've never been this way before. And we could, we've said in the past, yeah, the whole, the, uh, the whole landscape has changed. It's a different landscape this year from last year. No, this year is a different landscape from any time on the face of the earth. It's time for us to go forward. with We haven't been this way before. And so the, the need for us to focus on following is so important. Not focus on our goals, not focus on doing, but focus on following. Father, what are you saying for us? He's going to guide us forward, and, but we need to be intentional in our following. Every one of us. Intentional in our following. He'll give us discernment as we follow. These are a couple of scriptures that we talked about extensively in our elders meeting last, last weekend. Isaiah 43 and verse 19, 18, 19. This is Isaiah the prophet sort of looking back to what happened when the children of Israel came out of Egypt. You know, it was a new day then, wasn't it? They came out of Egypt. They had a journey into their promised land. It was a journey that they came out of. And so he's like looking back and applying some of those things that, uh, that were, were learned through the Exodus. But in Isaiah 43, he prophetically says, Thus says the Lord, who makes a way in the sea. Can you say what makes a way? Makes a way. Makes a way. There really isn't a way. You know, there's, there's reasons for there not to be a way. You know, shorthanded, you know, there's restrictions. What, what if things resurface? But God is a God who makes a way. <laughs> I'm so confident about it. I, I believe that he's already made a, made a way. And if we're willing to follow, we're going to find the way. He's gonna, his word's going to be a lamp into our feet and a light into our path. And we're going we're gonna to walk with boldness, bold steps in the days before us. Amen. So he's, thus says the Lord who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters who brings forth chariot and horse, army and warrior. They lie down and cannot rise. They are extinguished, quenched like a wick. So that's the enemy. That's the, that's the Pharaoh's chariots who were chasing down God's people, trying to keep them from going where they, they had, God had called them to go into their promised land and their deliverance. And it says God's going to deal with them just like he dealt with them. And they were buried in the, in the Red Sea as the waters caved in upon them once again. We got some big enemies, but they've already been beaten by Jesus. Amen? Amen. So let's not be intimidated, but let's be uh, impressed. <laughs> I'd rather be impressed with Jesus than intimidated by the evil one. Hallelujah. Together they are extinguished. They are quenched like a wick. Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? Now I'm doing a new thing. A new thing. Think about it. A new thing. Oh, we've had new things. This is a new thing. It must, it's got to be a new thing. God's doing a new thing. How exciting it is to be on the cusp of a new thing that God is doing. I believe the Holy Spirit's just all over this word to us as a people, as a church, for the church in, in the world. Really, God's doing a new thing in the land uh, throughout the world. Verse 18 there, it says, uh, Remember not former things, nor consider the things of old. In the New Living Translation, it's interesting. He says, it says, But forget all that. It's nothing compared to what I'm going to do. <laughs> Forget all that stuff. You know, God's done some amazing things in the past. Freeing us from our enemies. Defeating our enemies. Bringing us through uh, impossible situations. Making a way where there was no... Forget all that. There's a new thing at hand. It's nothing compared what I'm, to what I'm going to do. Isaiah 54 just a few chapters later, verses 1 through 3, it says, Shout for joy 
infertile one or barren one, you who have not given birth to any child, break forth into joyful shouting and cry aloud, you who have not been in labor, for the sons of the desolate one will be more numerous than the sons of the married woman, says the Lord. Enlarge the place of your tent, stretch out the curtains of your dwellings, do not spare them. Lengthen your ropes, strengthen your pegs, for you will spread about to the right and to the left, and your descendants will possess nations and will resettle desolate cities. Now this word is to a barren woman. Prepare to have children. She didn't have any experience in having children. She didn't have any experience in having a big ha- bigger house. She was happy in her small tent. God said, Make plans because increase is at hand. Make plans because things are about to change. And he, so, so he spoke those words. There are a few verbs that sort of jump out to me here, four verbs. First, the first one is to enlarge the place of your tent. Stretch out the curtains of your dwellings. Lengthen your ropes. Strengthen your pegs. Those are all things that this barren woman could do in preparation, right? So there's always things that we can do. Always things that we can do in preparation. The increase comes from him. Enlarging the place of our tent. No more small-mindedness. No more small-mindedness. We think according to, we we pray to a big God. And we, we're able to think and see according to the things that he's shown, not those things that are restricted, small, and within our ability. So we, we, we live big, stretch out the curtains. That's, it's not easy being stretched, right? You go through stretching process and sometimes it's painful. But he's making capacity for us, capacity in our hearts. He's going to give us big love for one another, big love for the people he sends us, for the ministries that he's rolling out a heart to, to, be, to be there. Lengthen your ropes, that, the, that impact, that relationship, those ropes that tie us together. The, the book of Ecclesiastes talks about a three-strand three cord that is not easily broken. Those ropes that are braided together that keep unity in the house. Lengthen those ropes. Strengthen your pegs. Drive them deep into the soil. For you will spread out to the right and to the left. And your descendants will possess nations. Our descendants are important for us all. I mean, out of there, God is, always has a heart for the generations, doesn't he? So, you know, if you're a senior citizen, God has a heart for you. If you're, if you're a, a toddler in the nursery, God has a heart for you. And everybody in between, God has a heart for generations. This is a, such a huge part of our vision is for generations. Like the, 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 we wouldn't just be a, a youth church. We wouldn't just be a, an old guy's church. But we would be a generational church. We would, we would have the life of the generations. It's so good for us all to be together and to grow together. And, and this is the heart of God for us as we go forward. So basically he's saying, forget the old, prepare for the new, and be focused on following. Focus on, if you want to narrow it down, forget the old, the good and the bad, just We've learned a lot of things. We'll take the wealth of wisdom along with us, but that's not where we're going. We face our, put our faces like flint to the way that he's calling us to. Prepare for the new, focused on following. This is a, the next slide there is a, is a, uh, kind of our theme for the next year, the one way forward. There it is. Okay. So this is a... This is a, kind of our theme for, for going forward. One way forward. Uh, one way being Jesus. Uh, you know what unifies us as we go forward? Is it not Jesus that unifies us? And if we go forward, we can go forward different directions. But if we're going forward with him, we're going one way. Jesus is the way. 
And if we go one way with him, we can go every place upon which the sole of our feet shall tread. He has given to us. And so this is our, this is our focus for the year, one way forward as we launch into this new year if we follow Jesus. So let's go through some of the goals that we have for 2021. And I'm going to ask some of the elders to come and share a little bit as well as we cover some of those goals. Goals for 2021. All right. Um, so first of all, first of all, of all I, uh, we really feel like we need to establish some support teams to help us walk these things out. We would like, when we, when we built the cafe back in the day, we had a, a projects team and we also had a finance team. Both those teams were, were important to raising up that restaurant, which is now our church offices. And so we feel like it's important in, in the spirit of preparation, right? Prepare for growth, prepare for expansion, prepare for what God is doing and saying that we raise up a finance team and a projects team both. Those who will bring in accountability financially. Those who help us set a budget and, uh, and a projects team for the things that we, we want to build and, and uh, bringing wisdom into that from some of our builders that are in the midst. So that's one of our goals. Secondly, uh, we want to develop depth of leadership in each ministry. It would, the key word there is develop. It takes time to develop, and it means, means bringing people on board and getting people trained up. But we want to develop leadership in each ministry. Uh, the next one is we want to do two training workshops, uh, one on evangelism and one on leadership training. The evangelism workshop, we're going to have evangelist Tim Grisham with us here on March 13th and 14th. On Saturday night, the 13th, we're going to have a evangelism workshop where he's going to share with us and impart out of his uh, grace gifting uh, for evangelism. So mark your calendars for that. It's going to be a great time. And uh, so I'm going to ask, probably, probably sometime in the summer we'll do a, a leadership training and just equipping our leaders. I'm going to ask Pastor Jay to come, if you would, and talk about our DNA focus. So one of the things we talked about with our, at our elders meeting was we talked about as a congregation, as a body of believers, there's just some basic things that everyone needs to have in their heart and place in their heart so they're able to grow out of that place. And so, Jillian, if you that DNA slide. So what we wanted to uh, bring forth was uh, and talk about today is taking the partners and vision. We started out with our vision Sunday, but what we're going to do is we're going to add to that so that people know what's going on because these elements of partners and vision, worship, prayer, serving, and stewardship should be part of our DNA as a church. And what that allows us to do is to build out of that. As Pastor was saying, we want to see people equipped, but we need to help you get equipped. That's what we're called to do as, as elders in the church. And so we want to take time, and we're going to do a five-week series, and we're going to be starting that. It'll be every Sunday. And what we're going to do is share those principles out of the Word of God. It's a kingdom DNA. It's not just a TLC DNA. It's what God's Word has to say about these things. And so we get this inside of us and what happens as people come into the congregations, people give their life to Jesus or come and link their hearts up with us, you're going to be able to impart that DNA into them. And we'll be able to build and function as a body of believers on the same page, working that one way forward to see the kingdom of God established not only in our own lives, not only in the people's lives that come here, which there will be some people coming here, so buckle in because it's going to be a wild time. 
And then we're also reaching our city, reaching our state, and reaching the world. We're going to make impact, uh, worldwide impact out of here of what the Lord's got planned to do. But it all starts to get that DNA inside of our hearts and moving forward with that. And so that'll be starting. And then what we'll do is next year, that'll just become part of our, that January Vision Sunday. Part of the thing we'll be, we'll be instructed on that. And it gives us the flexibility in with that where we're able to uh, move and change with that. It won't be the same old canned thing. Well, it's that sermon on the 5th of January. Yeah, here it is. But we'll be able to breathe life for what the Lord's doing right there. So that'd be great. And the elders will be doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want me to jump to the next one? Yeah. Okay. And then we have um, equipping groups. So uh, another thing we talked about was equipping groups. And that's that last slide on my set. There we go. So equipping groups, what, what are equipping groups? Are they different from life groups? Yeah, they are. So um, our hearts were burdened because we wanted to see God's people equipped. And, you know, this year, you know, 2020, last year, it, had, it really was a year of vision. The Lord shook everything that could be shaken. And the Lord started to work inside people's hearts, life, put a hunger in their hearts for the things of God, and really make a determination where their walk was at with the Lord and giving us a vision for what we want that to be. And so here we see this equipping groups, Ephesians 4, 11, South. Now, these are the gifts Christ gave to the church, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers for the responsibility to equip God's people. Okay, I'm responsible. I'm responsible to equip God's people because I'm an elder, because I'm a teacher, because I'm a pastor. Some days I'm an evangelist. Some days I'm an apostle. Some days I'm a prophet. But God's called us to equip the church of Jesus Christ. And so with that, just a little bit, Pastor. I won't, I won't preach, I promise. Dutch Sheets this morning, as he, uh, give him 15. If you haven't got that downloaded, you need to just do it and uh, study that in the morning with him. But he talked about today some things the Lord's going to be doing. The Lord's going to be coming and moving in a mighty way this year. And he's given the church, I believe, time to prepare. And so we're, we're going to prepare for that. But he's going to say there will be a biblical worldview. Will all be, it will be desired. A biblical worldview is going to be desired. God's going to put stuff in people's hearts. And then he talked about he, this portion of a book in Ephesians that the ministry will function at a higher level. Not a higher level above people, but a higher level of revelation. This is where the Lord's going to be taking us to. And Christ will be seen in the nations. And there will be explosive growth. And his love is going to start to rest upon us. So with these equipping groups, uh, our heart's desire is to equip the saints. We're still going to have life groups and things. This is all going to, We'll talk a little bit more about that later on. But it's a six-week class designed to strengthen your walk. And so these are just some suggestions up here we threw up there. You may have some things that you want on your heart. Say, you know what? I would like to have a six-week class on this. Will you, or I'm going to have a questionnaire later, and you'll be able to look. And I want what the congregation wants to be equipped on. Yeah. I, could, I could equip you on many things, but what do you want? What's the main thing is the main thing in your heart? They said, you know what, I need help right here. And we'll take six weeks, that's going to stop after six weeks, okay? And then we'll go on to another subject with that. And we can have multiple classes going as the congregation builds as God raises up men and women of God. And so that was the equipping groups that we talked about uh, to see those happen. Amen. So... There we go. The first two or three equipping groups, we're going to 
have kind of a broader base. Goliath Must Fall is one of those. And we want to do an, a spiritual identity group and then another group before summer. So those, those equipping groups, we're going to set aside our life groups for a while and reintroduce those as we get into some of the more focused groups. Then we'll have our life groups again. But again, we're operating with limited personnel. And we want to make the best of our time together, not only equipping, but providing opportunities for relationship and fellowship that way. So I'm going to ask uh, Kenny to come forward, and he's going to talk about some of our Operation Upgrade projects coming up. All right, good morning. Okay, so this church is what, 37 years old, 36, 37 years old? Uh, yeah, oh, 81, so 40 years. Um, those of you that either own a house or live in a house or anything, you realize that there are things that need to be upgraded occasionally, right? <laughs> so we've identified a few things. Um, you know, there's always something, there's always a need. Uh, but, you know, we're, we try to prioritize those needs as the congregation grows and to meet the needs of the church and everything. So we've identified a few things uh, for this year just to get, get us uh, moving forward. Um, <clears throat> the, the first of which, let's see. Um, Jay, you didn't put my picture up that I sent you. <laughs> That's <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, so anyhow, the first, uh, the first, uh, so we kind of prioritize some of the things that we want to do. One of the first thing is, uh, we've talked about it before, building a security wall back there for the children's ministry. It would be a wall kind of separating uh, the sanctuary and kind of giving us the ability to isolate the children's uh, classrooms. Uh, uh, for more security and also for more uh, sound barrier as well. So that's, uh, that's going to be probably our, our first bigger project. Um, some are big, some are small. Um, the next project is the kitchen overhaul. Um, now that's, that's a big one. So, you know, of course we're going to do these in phases as we can. And uh, we have some money set aside, but as we go, uh, you know, we're going to try to pay for them as we go as, as the the goal. Um, so the kitchen overhaul, um, you know, again, that's a 40-year-old kitchen, and so there's some things that need to be done there to upgrade it and to make it more practical for our uh, gatherings and everything. Um, some other smaller things, uh, we, we want to put more turf out, you know, the artificial turf that we put in last year. There's some other areas we want to uh, kind of uh, brush up with, uh, with uh, some turf. And also some more bushes and trees just for, you know, to beautify the place and uh, a little bit of shade as well. Um, this is something that they didn't think about back in 1981, to run fiber optics from the cafe to the church. They, uh -huh. they barely knew what fiber optics were back then no. in, the, <laughs> in our realm. Um, but that's a project, uh, you know, the, the Internet... Um, for those of you who teach Sunday school and you rely on the internet, all of a sudden you're watching your uh, lesson and, and it just drops. So our internet comes in at the cafe, so we want to run fiber optic cabling uh, you know, with media converters at each end so that we have a strong signal down here. Um, and it will greatly improve our, um, our connection and, and I would assume it will help tremendously with live streaming at that point as yeah. well. Um, and then uh, the women's restroom upgrade is another project that we want to do. Um, some work has already been done there, you know, just to get things started, but there's other things that we want to do to to uh, improve the, the women's restroom and, and accessibility and those kind of things. Um, <clears throat> and as these, pro uh, these projects start to roll out and everything, uh, we may be <clears throat> Excuse me, uh, tapping you on the shoulder. Uh, you know, we, we're all in this together, and we, you know, any help, <clears throat> uh, we, we greatly appreciate. <clears throat> Excuse me. The, uh, um, so, 
you know, a lot of you have the skills, the skill set, and there's others that may not quite have the full skill set, but it's a great opportunity to learn mm -hmm. uh, those things and, uh, and to just fellowship. You know, when you do these projects together, it's a good time of fellowship as well. Right. But those are some of the things coming um, in this new year, and uh, we'll uh, communicate them as, as they start to roll out. Thank you. All right. All right, so, um, so definitely uh, want to keep this before us, and we'll be putting a, a list of our goals up on the website and <clears throat> getting the, that out before you as we uh, go on in this year and, and uh, the plans that are laid out for doing these very things. All right. Another one of the goals that we have is the $142,563 that we have in debt. We want to be debt-free in five years. So we're going to be paying down that debt, some of that out of our, our church budget. And as we grow, our ability will, will increase in our ability. But that just, that's just a, something that's settled in my heart to have a five-year goal to wipe out that debt. Right now, we're, we're knocking out about 7000 a year. And you know, the way they do business loans, it just, it just never comes off. Unless you tackle it, it's, you've got to take it down. And it's, Goliath must fall. Come on. And uh, so uh, looking at that, we're going to start paying that off. As far as the, uh, the paying off the debt, <laughs> whoop, whoop. <laughs> Amen. So we want, we want to open that up to those who would like to help us pay off the debt. You take that on as a, as a, a, a challenge. And that uh, our operation upgrade, we decided to take monies out of, our, out of our budget and our savings to tackle some of those things with guidance of the, the finance team and the projects team. Uh, we get those estimations that have come forward. And then we want to... Uh, uh, use that money for, like the, the money we already have for our operation upgrade, but for canceling the debt, that's open for anybody to contribute to. And a little bit goes a long ways. So uh, do your part in helping us out there. I'm going to ask Jared to come right now, and we have some, some big changes coming in the area of our youth ministry. Look at Jared, he's out of surgery already, and he's still got a little bit of the effects of the formaldehyde so don't so good to see everybody today you know uh, one of the things that I'm really honored to be the elder over is uh, the youth ministry as well as children's ministry nursery the next generation and uh, for about eight years I was the youth leader here at the church and so it's just an opportunity for us to be able to give back to the next generation and uh, just really see this church grow are you guys excited to see the church grow Amen. And so um, I'm going to go ahead and have Angelo come forward. So come on forward, my brother. And uh, Angelo is uh, actually going to be um, no longer going to be doing the youth ministry here at the church. Uh, but we just want to say thank you so much. I only have one arm. Here we go. Um, we just want to say thank you so much for your dedication to the youth ministry, the things that you have done. Um, it's definitely did not go unnoticed. And, uh, man, I'll tell you what, you guys want to know the heart of God? Just look at this guy's face. And I'm just really excited, just uh, the, the things that God is going to be doing through him. Um, the youth, and, and no longer in the youth ministry, but just really focusing on the stuff there in the back. And uh, really putting the publishing, uh, you know, things from week to week um, on Facebook, on YouTube, and getting the word out to those that are not able to come because of the coronavirus and the things that are currently going on right now. So we just want to say thank you for all the work, hard work that you've done, and uh, it did not go unnoticed, and we just really appreciate you very much. And so we're going to be having um, some new youth leaders coming in, uh, James and Michaela, so if you guys can go ahead and come on forward. This is tough. All right, so James and Michaela is going to be stepping in as our, as our new youth leaders here at the church, and uh, we're just so excited uh, to, to have them on, on board, and uh, James is just going to go and just share just a, 
a really brief, um, just what his heart is for the youth ministry, and um, we're really excited to have you guys with us. Yeah, thank you, Jared. Appreciate it. Um, first off, I just, the Lord is really moving on my heart, even in conversation with Pastor Rich uh, last night. I feel like we're coming into a new season, and I believe that season is a season of revival. And I feel like this morning during uh, worship, there's a lot of confirmation in that. And I believe that the youth is going to be a big part of revival in the city of Pueblo. So I just want to first off share that Michaela and I, our heart is for the youth in this city. Uh, Malachi 4, six says that in the last days, uh, the Lord will pour out the spirit of Elijah and that he'll return the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to the fathers. And I believe we're seeing that come to fruition. Uh, with that said, I'd just like to hand this off to my wife. She's going to share a little bit on our vision, okay? Everybody always lets the man talk first, and I love it. Like, go first, do your thing. No, but guys, we, to be so honest, we are stoked. We have been taking um, some time to prepare our hearts among so many other things for this new journey. Um, and so we just want to share with you guys our vision and our name and how we're going to move forward. So uh, James and I have settled on the new name Rooted, um, just because Rooted at the Life Church, come on now, uh, <laughs> sounds pretty cool. Um, but really, we just want to... Um, our, our vision, you know, is basically saying to lead the youth of Pueblo in understanding their identity as children of God by teaching the truths of building life's foundation on a personal relationship with Christ. Uh, so we want to raise a generation of ambassadors um, for Christ by discipling the youth and allowing this next generation to come forward. Um, the scripture that follows with, sorry, we don't have a, a little thing. Sorry. <laughs> um, but the scripture that follows our, um, our logo is uh, Colossians 2, 7. Let your roots grow down into him and let your lives be built on him. Then your faith will grow strong in the truth you were taught and you will overflow with thank thankfulness. So I will hand it back to James. I really admire this woman. So can we give her a round of applause? Yeah. Yes. I uh, just want to share a couple of uh, goals that we have for this year. First, I'd like to start by uh, saying that we'd like to kind of promote an environment where kids feel comfortable and welcome. And by environment, we kind of mean even the physical environment at the youth room. So we've spent a lot of time at this point uh, improving and upgrading the youth room underneath the office building. Uh, things that we've already done, we painted the youth room gray and on the walls and then the ceiling's black. It really uh, allows the light to kind of reflect in there and brightens up the space a little bit. Uh, we've also freshened up and, and cleaned downstairs. We donated the old couches and furniture uh, and some of the large televisions and stuff like that to New Horizons, so that's going to a good cause. Um, and then some things we'd still like to accomplish. We'd like to refinish the basement floors with an epoxy so we'll be buffing out uh, the stain that's already been applied there. It's kind of just uh, a little bit worn at, at this time. I don't know, how long ago did you guys do that? Oh, back when I was in Years. 2007. 2007. So uh, just making sure we're buffing that, and then we're going to lay an epoxy over that here shortly. Uh, we'd like to build an accent wall on each side of the projector screen down in the basement. Uh, we've got a pool table and... and uh, air hockey down there and both of them are broken but very usable so I'm going to spend some time repairing them and making them functional again and then we'd like to update the furniture a little bit to include a small gathering area of, of tables and chairs down there uh, and something Jared actually turned us on to we'd like to have a fire pit out there so that we can enjoy bonfires with the youth as well as possibly laying some more of that artificial turf somewhere out next to the office building so that we've got a field to have recreational activities on. So those are a couple of the things that we'd like to take care of yet as far as activities and updating the youth room. Um, another goal we have this year is that we'd like to bring our students to at least one conference uh, and possibly a camp as well. We were thinking in July, there's a big conference in Colorado Springs called Desperation. We think that would be a really neat opportunity for some of the students here. 
Uh, we'd also just like to do some fundraising because unfortunately there's always uh, money involved with things like this. So we're going to come up with some fundraising and we'll be asking for volunteers and, and people to help participate in that, that process. So lastly, just a couple dates for those of you who have kids. Uh, and are interested in our youth program, we're going to be having a parent meeting on Thursday, February 25th, and we'll just be meeting in the office building. I think we, do we decide a time? 6 p.m., that's right, 6 p.m. And then our official start date is going to be in the first week of March, and we're going to try to meet on Wednesday nights. That way, some of you parents who would like to join in on the small group down here at the church building, if you'd like, you can drop off your kids and then come on up and, and enjoy that as well. So that date's going to be Wednesday, March 3rd. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Stay right here, you guys. I'm going to ask the elders to come, and we're just going to gather around you and, and pray, as this is uh, you know, one of the ministries that has been raised up in our midst. Um, there's a a sanctioning and a ascending that happens when when the Lord puts his hand on a couple for a ministry like this. And uh, I want to pray for Angelo as well. He I believe God's going to open some new doors for him. Thank you, Father. Thank you for this day, Lord, and all that it holds, things that we see, things we don't see yet. Father, we're grateful for your hand upon it all. That God, you're, you're walking us forward. You're leading us in it into fruitfulness and to increase. Father, I thank you for Angelo. I thank you for his big heart. I thank you, Father, that you have, have, uh, you've ordained a new day for him as well and new open doors, new possibilities. And we release him into those new, new possibilities and those new commissions that come from heaven. I pray, Lord, that you would strengthen him and that, Lord, you would lift him and that, God, you would cause him to, to walk with great understanding in these days. Even that confusion would be set far aside, that, the Lord, he would always be on task in the Lord. Thank you, Lord. As we lay our hands on James, Michaela, we bless you. We thank you, Lord. Thank you for this position that you've raised them up in. Father, establish them. We, re we pray the favor of God to rest upon them, Lord, as they have been commissioned into the ministry to the youth. Father, we pray that you would give them a heart that, that is uh, flexible, pliable, Lord. I just see you giving them a, such a pliability, Lord, because you, the nature of youth, youth ministry is that it always changes. And that, Lord, you would give them the grace for that, for the ever-changing nature of youth ministry, those who are raised up and those who are sent out those who new ones that are coming in, that, Lord, their hearts would be always ready. I thank you for a readiness on their feet, Father. Father, I thank you that uh, the, your yoke is easy and your burden is light. And so I thank you for the yoke that you've given to them, Lord, not just one with the other as a, as a husband and wife, but, Lord, you're yoking them with Christ in, in the ministry that you've called them to. Lord, you're carrying the heavy end of that. And when things get heavy, you guys, you just got to step back and realize that this is the Lord's yoke is easy, his burden is light, in Jesus' name. And we just say, let God arise and his enemies be scattered, because we're rising up. We say, let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Just as they did in the olden days when they rose from their place of resting to their place of advancing, that Lord, not only the people rose up, but they said, God arise and scatter our enemies as we go forward. And so we invoke the name of God, Lord, for favor, for reach, Father, for impact, for the lives of young people, Lord, that this place would just be a haven of restoration for them and commission for them in so many different ways. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Bless you. Bless you. In Jesus' name. Fresh oil. Amen. Amen. As a matter of fact. Amen. Love you guys. Thanks, Rich. Yeah. I do apologize. I had a whole uh, slideshow presentation, but we've had some glitches in our... In our uh, oh, it's on now. 
We've had a few glitches today. It's all right. Thank you. All right, so uh, we want to, uh, as part of our vision, one of the things we really want to do is lay out oversight and accountability for every ministry. So we would want to quickly express our oversight and accountability in the ministries that we have. So elders, if you guys would come forward now. Come on, Jared. All right, so uh, this is just kind of a flow chart of how things are working and how we have it set up, just so everybody knows. And, the, and as uh, we're going to call out some of the different ministry leaders, and we want to pray over you as well this morning, okay? So, uh, Pastor, oh, let's see, who was, who was first? Well, I got it. If you could uh, go ahead, Jillian, and put those slides up. Yeah. So the theme, you know, one way forward is that uh, we're looking at stepping into a new era. And so as a scripture out of Isaiah, things have been challenging to our hearts. We want you to know also that we were challenged to such a place where we said we have to put some covering and some structure to make sure that the congregation knows where we're going and, uh, and that our vital role as elders inside the church and that we're, we're behind and understand we're behind you because we're understanding what the Lord wants to do inside of your lives. And so uh, the organizational flow chart, uh, we've broken it down for today. So the next slide. So, yeah, there we are. And so these are the elders here. We have, I don't think we even have different shirts on at least today. So, uh, but like I said, there's a, there's a spiritual oversight that an elder brings uh, to the church. But there's also a physical one that we as watching God's people, helping God's people grow in that. And it's critical for church growth. What we're doing today, we felt so critical to the growth of the church to see the church maintain and continue to grow down the road so that you know what's happening and the oversight that the eldership provides. So that said, with that, I think what I'm going to have Ken go first. And so, uh, Ken, there's uh, yours there and your lovely wife, if she'll come up. Yeah, come on up, Angela. And are we calling the leaders up at this time? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, come on up here, Angela. For those of you who don't know my lovely wife, this is Angela. Um, so, <laughs> um, so Angela and Juanita. Juanita wasn't able to come today. Do we have a picture of Juanita? I hate to throw that. Uh, no? Okay. Um, earlier they showed... Angela and Juanita's picture together. Most of you know Juanita. Um, but anyhow, Angela and Juanita are the leaders of the uh, women's ministry. And uh, they've had a very fruitful ministry these last couple of years. Uh, COVID-19 kind of threw a little curve, but uh, you know, God's still working. Um, uh, when, in our elders meeting, we talked about, uh, we talked about winter wheat uh, those of you that are familiar with winter wheat, you know, they plant it in the fall and uh, all that moisture that falls on that field in the winter time, all the snow and everything goes into the ground and that the roots are just really developing in there. And then when the springtime comes, uh, the sun hits that ground and hits that wheat and it's, there's a fully developed root system and it just grows like really fast. And uh, so I really believe not only in the women's ministry and the men's ministry, uh, but in the church, that that's been going on during this, uh, uh, this reprieve, um, you know. And, uh, you know, God's, like the song says, even when we don't see it, you're working. When we don't feel it, you're working. So God's been working in the lives of the leaders and the lives of, of uh, just those involved. Groups and bring um, them forward. So anyhow... Uh, so my oversight includes the women's ministry, and Jason, do you mind coming up? And can you bring your wife with you, even though she's not one of the leaders? I know. <laughs> but uh, um, are we the assistant leaders as well? Okay. Okay. Um, Jacob. Yeah. Okay. Jacob, come on up. Yeah. So Jacob. I need my assistance too. 
Oh, come on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. J yeah, Jacob has really uh, stepped up this last we year and uh, uh, partnered with Henry. Jason, and they've done a great job together leading Bible studies and, and uh, everything. Um, <laughs> yeah, we don't want this to grow too fast. I mean, even though it's the winter wheat season. Um, but uh, along those lines, also the women's uh, ministry, Juanita and Angela have uh, brought on board some additional leaders uh, in, with them, uh, which would be Bobby and Paula and Joy, who's not here. Um, so uh, why don't you guys come up to Bobby and Paula, mm. <laughs> since we're acknowledging everybody. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So anyhow, uh, so these ministers, there's so much that goes on behind the scenes, so much work that these people put this into thing's been a train, uh, a train wreck. their ministry, and it's because of the love that God has put in their heart for the, the people that he's brought their way. So uh, it's, really, it's really neat to see everything developing so well. Um, and then, uh, this, these are new things that, that I'm over. Oh, we're going to develop a finance team, uh, which I'll be more on the budgeting side, uh, oversight. Um, so uh, what Rich was talking about, the projects teams and the finance teams. And, uh, so we're going to develop that as the year rolls out. And then the, I already mentioned the special building projects. So these are the areas uh, over which I have oversight. Okay. okay. Uh, who's next? To stay up here or? If we could have the leaders just stay up here, if everybody else could maybe you know, sit in the front row. Who's next? So next, it is Jared. All right, we're going to keep this real quick. James and Michaela, if you guys would go ahead and come on forward. We just prayed for you guys, but I'm going to be the elder over the youth ministry, as I said just a little few minutes ago, um, as well as. Hannah is um, the one that's going to be overseeing, of course, uh, the children's ministry as well as the nursery. And Desiree Floyd, if you can come on up as well. Um, she is uh, helping out with uh, junior high. And so some really exciting things are going on. So I'll go ahead and uh, pass it on to, I think it's Larry. Well, good morning or good afternoon by now, right? Okay. Uh, my areas of responsibility are two, uh, security and the worship team. I'm going to speak about security real briefly. Um, this is a ministry we started uh, maybe a year and a half ago, two years. Uh, we began to see a lot of things happening around the country, and so we wanted to make sure that when people come to our church that there's safety uh, and some, some security here. Our, our leader in the security department is uh, Bob Shockley. Uh, he's unable to be here today, so we'll send a shout out to him, you know, just, just in our prayer, okay? Then secondly is our, our worship ministry. Um, our worship leader, ministry leader is, is Josh Floyd. I don't know where he's at. He disappeared. But... Hey, Josh, come on up. Will you? He's back there working. All righty. Josh, come on up. Uh, and we are really blessed to have both Bob and Josh. Uh, Bob has a lot of background in safety and security, it's just from his work, but also uh, Josh has brought a lot of good stuff to our ministry. I hope you guys agree, right? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. You know, not only is he chasing after the Lord just continually, uh, but he's also a fantastic uh, teacher, musician, vocalist, so he's helped us out tremendously. So with that, we say thank you uh, for, it's this for your giftings, and we're also grateful for you being a part of our ministry. All right. All right, Jay. Hey, so uh, you know what? It's 1210. Everyone look at your watch. All right. Just and then take a deep breath, and we're going to wrap things up. I'd like to have Diane come up. So uh, ministry oversight from... Uh, Diane and I. Uh, so uh, I'll be over the life groups, equipping groups, altar training, 
uh, guest relations, includes ushers, greeters, follow-up. We're, we're going to be onboarding. We don't want anyone to get lost in the cracks. Also be responsible for the uh, church website with that. And then uh, the church center, the app on the phone. And then uh, conferences. As the church starts to do conferences, we'll be a part of that, helping guide and direct that. We've been involved in a lot of conferences and stuff. And, and tech support. And so I do know that there's two types of fiber. Okay, all right. I thought it was funny when I thought about it, but it's a rough crowd today. So, uh, so you pray for us uh, as God, as Lord comes and brings people in to be a part of that. The hearts are burdened. We'll help impart that in there. We're looking so forward to the equipping groups. Yeah. Hey, Amen. John Matson, would you come on up? It's uh, one of our life group leaders. Was it just John out of there? If we miss somebody, I, we just apologize so much. That's, when, that's what happens when you start naming names. We, we thought about that. But, um, so, you know, my oversight, it's kind of an oversight, general oversight over the ministry. But administration, people care, our uh, office setting. I'm going to ask Zach if you would come forward and Lily as well. So uh, we want to pray for you guys. Uh, in the office, we do communications, social networking. It's kind of the the main hub there. Uh, prayer. Kathy, would you come up, please? Set by your sister. <laughs> Fall Festival. Jason Hannon's already here. Uh, ministry coordination, guest speakers, partners in vision, baptisms, deacons, John Reggio, if you would come as well. Uh, over the cleaning grounds, facilities, and kitchen team, which we really need to work on reformulating the kitchen team. So I'm going to ask all these leaders to stand. We would just like to, to pray as a body, a congregation. Thank you for all those who stand in support of these that are, are leaders among us. And uh, we want to flow efficiently, and we want to create accountabilities so that we're, we're actually, uh, you know, helping each other, and, and nobody's out there on an island in ministry, which happens at times, and we don't want that. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for those who have a heart for the kingdom, those you've gathered together here today, and these who have leadership upon their shoulders. We pray that you would grace them with fresh oil, that you would fill them with your spirit, that, God, you would ca cause them to be a, a part of the the, the stretching of the curtains, the lengthening of the cords, the driving deep the tent pegs, Lord, as they have their places and positions, that they would be, there would just be a spirit of excellence upon us all, Lord, in this new year. Lord, we are triumphing over the challenges that come our way, and we thank you for victory in the camp and peace upon each and every one of us. Cause us, Lord, to be efficient and uh, to carry out what you put in our hearts to do, Lord God, in fullness and together in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. Give them all a good hand clap. We're sorry for uh, going long this morning. But we just, we're just going to close the meeting right now. And... Uh, I had a couple of words that came to me as I was thinking about Vision Sunday. And the words were courageous expectations. Courageous expectations. You know, you can have expectations, but if they're misplaced expectations, they'll take the wind right out of your sail. They will take the life right out of your voice. They'll take the strength right out of your, out of your being. Misplaced expectations are, are a part of the discouragements that we face in life. But when our expectations are fixed in Jesus and his, his word that doesn't fail, then we can be courageous. We can be courageous as we walk forward. So as we go forward this year, I just want to say to you, be courageous. Don't let expectations that you had that perhaps were misplaced take the wind out of your sails. It's time to start again. It's time for a new start. It's time for the fresh wind of the Spirit to catch us up and to take us forward. Amen? So I'm just going to ask you to stand with me. As we go forward, we say one way forward, Jesus. Jesus, one way forward with him. Amen. Every goal is possible because of him. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord. We just... Uh,
Thank you for the body of Christ, Lord. And Lord, we have a lot of words today, but we pray that you would take those words that have been spoken and let them land in our hearts. Lord, that vision would not be information, but something that becomes a living reality within us, that unites us, that, that causes us to go farther than we would have gone, that causes us to dig deeper than we would have, we would have without, without your grace. And so, Father, we pray that, Lord, you would make these things a reality to us. Brand them in our hearts, Lord God, that we would carry them out with uh, diligence, with passion, Lord, in the things you've called us to. We come against that debt in the name of Jesus, and we call that debt canceled in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for freeing us of it, Father God, so we can, in these, in these months, years, and uh, decades to come, should you tarry, uh, Lord, this, this place will be a, a city on a hill, Lord, a beacon of hope to our community, and that, Lord, we'll, we'll not be a slave to any man in Jesus' name. Father, we just thank you for your hand upon the projects that, Lord, we'll get done what, what we can get done. We thank you for your provision for that. Uh, the clarity and the calling in each and every one of us, even as you raise up new ministers in our midst and new ministries. Lord, giving us depth in every form of uh, ministry that we have so there's layers and that, Lord, it's not a big burden on any one person, but, Lord, that we can work together and see that two are better than one. God, you give us great increase. I pray that you'd awaken giftings within us, Lord, that we didn't know that we had. Father, we give that back into your hands now. We thank you for the life, church. May there always be life here. May there always be love here. May there always be a sense of Jesus in the center of it all. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen. Amen. Okay, once again, this is not our normal Sunday sermon, Sunday uh, activities, but this is one, something we do once a year. We're so grateful for those who have come out, uh, for those who have, are visiting with us today. Andrew, God bless you. Good to, good to meet you earlier. Good to have you with us. Uh, why don't you guys fellowship a little bit before you leave and have a great week. Praise God. Remember Wednesday, Goliath must fall. <laughs>